Where are the E90 videos? It's a very common question I've been getting recently and it kind of makes sense because the last time I uploaded a video on this car was around seven months ago. The truth is that off camera the car was experiencing some weird issues and I got fed up with it so to the back burner it went. I decided to focus on my other cars for now since they were a lot more straightforward. Well, kind of. The truth is I miss driving the E90. I really do think the engine is starting to fail and it might be time to swap it out for another one. But before I decide to go that route, I'm gonna try to do everything I can in this video to fix it. Hey, stop laughing, bro. We're gonna finally try to show the car some love again. The reason I say again is because off camera for the last few months, we've actually been trying to diag whatever problem the E90 has where it's running rich, it has a little bit of smoke when you rev, and inconsistent idle and a bunch of bull going on. So the first time we're actually gonna have it on film while we try to diagnose more things. I did talk to my uh, tuner, David, and he's gonna try his best to assist us and finally find the issue. We'll probably do another compression test today, which we've done like three of them in the past. And then also we're gonna go to a single bank O2 sensor placement, which is a fairly new thing for the N54 community. And if you guys haven't heard of that setup, well, this video is gonna show you guys that. So to explain the single bank O2 sensor setup, I decided to call my tuner, David Shoup, and have him quickly explain why running this particular setup is highly recommended. Take it away, David. Oh, thanks for putting me on the spot. I appreciate it. <laughs> so basically, the general gist of it is the O2 sensors are never designed to be in the manifold. They're designed to be in the downpipe. So what ends up happening is when you put an O2 sensor that close, uh, it's exposed to a lot more heat, a lot more pressure. And over time, you can drastically decrease the lifespan of the O2 sensor, and you can also throw off the way that it actually reads lambda. What you want to do is you want to move the O2 sensors into the downpipe. Now, since we only have one turbo and one downpipe, it doesn't make sense to use four sensors. So MHD did a lot of hard work, a lot of testing, and they were able to devise that logic that allowed us to cut it down to just a, a secondary on bank one. You just run two sensors, you have a primary and a secondary, and plug the manifold holes up and live happily ever after. And from your experience, obviously that's made it a lot easier for you and made the car a lot more reliable for those that own the N54, right? With O2 sensors replacements and stuff like that? Correct, yeah. So it, you know, obviously it's cheaper because now you don't have to worry about burning up two extra sensors, right? The majority of my clients that make this transition always experience improvements in drivability because the O2 sensor is able to work a little bit better. So highly recommend it. You know, it's one of the best modifications you can do on the car if you've done a single turbo conversion, so. All right, well, you guys heard it. Definitely, if you guys haven't done this to your N54 and you do have a big single turbo, if you guys are going that route, this is something that David has been trying to get me to do for months now and I finally listened to him and I did it. And luckily, I make sure he supports the, the, the entire setup so it works fluidly. Last time I checked underneath my engine bay, I actually had six OEM B58 coils and somehow I got a Dynan one and a Bosch one. Hey, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. That wasn't Mike. <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Anyways, I was super excited to show you guys this setup. I didn't really show it to you guys. I thought it had the car running by now and I'd clean it up because we just kind of have some weird stuff going on with like black lines and then it has stainless metal line. I'm super picky, so I didn't want to show it to you guys until it was fully cleaned up. Well, you guys kind of get to see it. You probably haven't seen the billet valve cover for VTT, which looks really good. I did paint the, the intake manifold, which I think you guys saw. Uh, B58 coil conversion, all dual, all catch can setup. You got a lot more things, but sure, I get this car running first before we move on to that stuff. <laughs> it's not terrible, that one. It is black. What? All right, whatever. What are you talking so, about? So here, here's the thing. So we've swapped out the spark plugs in the last five months, like three different times. And every time we pull them back out, they're black. Oh, you see this one is actually still wet. Oil. Yeah, that one's oil. That was cylinder what? Four. Cylinder four. Which I remember, that was definitely the cylinder that was giving us issue. I think it was that one in number two. This one's fresh, bro. Ooh, caca. By the way guys, if you need B58 coil conversion, spark plugs, coils, intake manifold, valve cover, Mossaman, shiny thermostat, 
You guys know where to get that. VehicleViles.com. Help support your boy. I appreciate it. The problem is that the car is dead. <laughs> you gotta connect the battery charger. I'm scared. Wasn't it 110 when you first did it? Uh, yeah, I let it build up compression over and over for a long time. What if the battery's just shit? I've given enough power to build up compression. What? <laughs> I'm just saying, the battery sounds weak as How's that gonna build compression? As, you, as you're cranking it. Okay. If you got a juicy ass battery, it, it don't do the compression so slow like that. Weak. Doesn't matter, I'm counting the same. It's not like I'm counting cylinder four, like, okay, I'm gonna do six on this one. And, Five on the other one. <laughs> okay guys, single bank O2, here we come. <laughs> We're gonna move on to single bank O2 sensor. And by the way, we gotta get some like refuel into this car because the E85 has been sitting in this car for like six months. So I'm gonna put some 93 in there since it's a flex fuel setup and see what happens. Well for BMW right here. Modular. Yep. I'll leave the link for the part number down below. Yeah, to Amazon. Cause I don't sell that on vehiclevirus.com. <laughs> Look at that. Stock on modular. And that's how you remove a downpipe. <laughs> we have no shop insurance. What is this? What the hell? It's an insert, bro. It's a little slot. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to weld that. I think that's where Chris puts his change. <laughs> He's looking for exhaust manifold cracks. Back when the DR700 came out from Doc Race, the first two versions of the manifold, they were tubular. They had cracking issues. How do I know? Because I experienced them. Eventually he came out with the third version, which is cast, and I haven't had an issue with it yet, and I pushed the shit out of the car for about a year. Um, so he's just making sure we don't have a crack, because if you do have a crack in your exhaust manifold, that would cause a bunch of issues with overboosting, rough idling, a bunch of other stuff, so that's what he's checking for since we have better access underneath the car. Did this exhaust leak not cause any issues? You can literally see through it. Look. <laughs> uh, an exhaust leak can cause some issues too, guys, so uh, we're gonna have to get this guy to weld it. All right, go get the welder. <laughs> In-house in welder. In a nutshell, the idea here is to drill a big hole for a threaded piece that accommodates an O2 sensor. Once you do that, you weld the piece in place, and that's pretty much it. Dude, I love those welds. Sexy. Yeah, did you get rid of the slot? Yeah. Oh, jeez. So, since Chris is getting my hot dogs from <laughs> Racetrack. Glizzy. And some gas. We gotta put these on. These are just plugs for the manifold. So we're gonna put this on the bank one, this on bank two, and then tighten that up so the manifold is leak free. It's kind of tight in here. I don't see nothing. I'm like burning my hands. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> oh there it is. Make sure you close that. Now we gotta fish our O2 sensor in and go through the back of the engine. And it's one of these. Can't remember which one. I think this is the short one, that's the primary. We'll double check later on. Fresh plugs. These are in-house engineered by us. In the bathroom. <laughs> yes. That damn thing sound like goddamn Prius now. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Just got 93, five gallons of it. I have a flex fuel set up, so no matter if I'm at E85, E40, E30, the tune automatically adjusts. So 93 to try to clear out the rest of the E85 that I have running in the tank and in the lines. And hopefully that's part of the reason why I was acting up. You know, you can't really have a car with E85 sit for too long because that just causes issues. This is pretty cool. Hit the on button. <laughs> Bro, that's a, 
That's clutch. In-house engineer at vehiclevirus.com. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you got to smack your lips like that? Always. The ketchup smell is too strong. <laughs> Always fresh hot dogs. If you guys are not familiar with MHD, it's a tuning solution. You can use some of their OTS maps that MHD has tuners make for them, or you can go custom app. We sell the wireless adapter that you can use on your E, G, and F chassis cars, and even the Supras. If you guys need that adapter, let us know, or you can just visit the links in the video description. No active DME codes, and we got a shadow code that says fuel high pressure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that means yes, it's good. 9385, single turbo, N20, PI, six manual transmission. Options, single bank fuel, and there it is. For single turbo converted cars only, you must have the bank one primary O2 sensor moved to the downpipe close to the turbine exit and the bank one rear O2 sensor in the normal location. Both bank two and O2 sensors should be removed. Bungs plugged to the ports. Cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and map right. <laughs> My surprise, the E90 sounded pretty damn good. The car sounds healthy. I put it on the lift so we could check underneath to make sure everything was installed and rotted correctly, and you know, to make sure we don't have an exhaust leak. And now it was time to take the 335 for a drive. We're down to E21. Sadly, she was still smoking. I mean, not a whole lot, but it was enough to upset me. But to be fair, I just needed to drive the car more, get a couple of revisions in there, and work with David off camera. And I got the laptop here so I can update Motive Reflex. There are so many updates I need to take care of. And for MHD, we're gonna start using MHD Plus, which has its advantages. Map, All right. N54 is being N54. Been chasing a lot of little small issues like fueling and stuff like that. I go in here, underneath the intake manifold where I have the fuel pressure regulator. This line that goes to the port injection side fuel rail was completely popped off, it gave out. That was definitely one of the issues that's probably been going on for a while. It's probably been very loose, uh, leaking fuel. Do a log off camera, send it over to, to David and it's not reading ethanol content for whatever reason. While we were getting an ethanol reading, it showed up fine, but when I was doing logs under hard acceleration, there's a parameter called reflex PI DC scaled that would randomly just cut out under wide open throttle. So now I got the car in a lift, about to lift it up. I don't know if the ethanol sensor is bad, if the lines went bad, I don't know what the hell's going on. I checked motive reflex, I checked all the harnesses, I checked all connectors, everything seems to be okay. So hopefully we can figure it out. We normally always use the Continental sensor, but since this one gave out, I decided to try out a different one from a company called Innovate, which by the way, we do sell on our website. So replacing the ethanol sensor fixed the issue. So now it doesn't cut off when I accelerate, but we are having an issue that once we climb up to like 6,000 RPM, the fuel pressure is dropping and that can be so many things. It's not a fuel leak. I looked all over the car, engine bay underneath, looked up the relay for the secondary pump in the trunk, positive, negative, everything seems to be connected. Everything seems to be working fine, so I'm not sure what's going on there. We'll do a short log right here to like 5,000 RPM, send it over to David, see what he says, and then we will go from there. But you guys wanna make over 700 horsepower, this is the headache that comes with it. Like everything, bro, like everything. I'm fed up with it, guys. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm finishing this video because I'm so upset. But I'm sure it's all gonna end up being worth it. Drive trim malfunction, misfire cylinder one. <laughs> Did multiple revisions. The car seems to be running really good now. David went ahead and redialed the tune. We're still currently on 93 octane, so 18 to 20 PSI. But I'm glad that she's running okay. I think she's still very fun and sounds absolutely amazing. So let's go for a drive so I can show you guys. So as always, I'm gonna have the MHD login interface on so we can document all the runs that we do. It's just good practice in case anything ever happens. At least you have documentation of all 
the stuff that it recorded. So I always have it set uh, to auto a lot of the time. So I can just record every time I do a wide open throttle. Oh yeah, sounds great. That's like partial throttle too, maybe like 25%. <laughs> so I'm looking at the codes. Misfire cylinder one. I wonder why. seems to be running pretty good but occasionally it has its moments where it starts to smoke a little at this point my only guesses were the turbo is starting to fail or one of the piston rings the oil ring went bad should i go with the built motor i think this car really deserves it what do you guys think let me know in the comments like the video if you guys enjoyed it it really does help out the channel and subscribe that way you guys know what ends up happening next as always thanks for watching till next time